What is going on everybody? This is JP and welcome to Code Boosters. In this video we are going to talk about the linear regression gradient descent. Now we know that the linear regression makes the prediction by plotting a straight line that fits best to the data set. And the way to plot the straight line is by using something called cost function which is the measurement of how well the predictions are doing. Or in other words, cost function or the cost value represents the error between the actual predictions and the actual value. And in the previous video, we saw that the cost function formula is given by this, where M is the total number of data points, Y is the actual value or the labels, and Y the hat is, are the predictions. So in order for the straight line to fit the plot, the cost function or the error representation should be minimum. And to minimize this, we need to use the gradient descent algorithm. So the gradient descent algorithm is an algorithm we use to minimize the cost function value so that our straight line fits best to the data set. So what is gradient descent algorithm? Let us start. Let us say we are plotting cost versus theta graph. Here I'm taking only one of the many theta parameters. If the number of theta parameters increases, the dimension of the graph increases. So for simplicity, I'm only taking one of the theta parameter and I'm plotting it with respect to the cost. The graph for the cost and the theta is going to look like this, a parabola. Now let's say at the beginning we had a cost function value which was here. So our goal is to minimize this cost function. The minimum of the cost lies at its minima. So we need to reach from this point to its minima. How do we do that? Let us say we take one step and we reach here at this point. Then we take another step and then we reach even closer at this point and then we we take another step we reach here but we are exceeded so we'll backtrack reach here then we'll reach here then we will oscillate around this region now one thing to know with the gradient descent algorithm we are taking one step we are taking steps like this to reach to its minimum as we are taking steps every time, we are never going to be able to converge exactly at its minima. But we are going to oscillate at the region very close to that minima. But that serves our purpose. Now, what we do in gradient descent is that we repeat a step which is theta equals to theta minus alpha times derivative of cost with respect to derivative of theta. Okay, so we repeat this equation. It is alpha multiplied by derivative of cost versus with respect to derivative of theta. And alpha here is a positive constant. Now, why does this step or this equation represent one step of this algorithm. Let us take a closer look. Let us examine this derivative of cost with respect to derivative of theta. When we are at this point or this half of the parabola, the derivative of cost with respect to derivative of theta, which is nothing but the slope of the graph, will be negative. Okay, so slope will be negative, right? So this quantity is going to be negative multiplied by negative sign, which is going to be positive. So theta was here, sorry. So the theta was here, but as the theta is adding with some positive quantity, negative, negative multiplied by negative, positive, theta is adding with some positive quantity, it is going to increase. Okay. Did you see? Okay. And let us say if we are on this half, 
right here, then the slope is going to be positive. So negative minus positive quantity, so the theta is going to actually decrease. So every time we take this equation, every time we repeat this equation, if, it, if the initially theta was on this side, the theta is going to go closer and closer and closer towards the minima. And if the theta becomes, let's say, exceeded to here, like in this step, which exceeded, it is going to backtrack, or it is, it is going to backtrack, and it is going to again go closer and closer to the minima. So when we repeat this step for quite a number of times, we eventually end up to the local minima. That was the gradient descent algorithm. So now let us derive the derivative of the cost function with respect to theta. Before that, let us see how our data set looks like. Let's say our data set is x and it has m data points and n dash features. Okay, so the data set will be in the form of matrix of m comma n dash. Now I'm going to do something different with this data set and that is I'm going to add another column vector of ones to the data set, right? So the total dimension or the total number of columns or the total number of features are going to be n dash plus one. Let's say that is n. Now why did I do that? It will be more clear in a while. Similarly, the, the labels y will have m data points, one for each. The spelling of data points is wrong, but bear with it. One for each label, right? So the dimension of y will be m comma 1. Now we know that the predictions y hat has the formula theta n dash x n dash plus theta n dash minus 1 x n dash minus 1 plus dot 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 up till theta 1 x 1 plus theta naught. So if we were to get a vector for the theta, it will be of the dimension n dash plus 1 comma 1. n dash plus 1 is nothing but n. So the dimension or the size of the theta array or vector will be n comma 1. Okay, so let us let me summarize. X is our data set where on the column side there are features and let us say if the data set is of house prices, the features can be size of the house, number of bedrooms, square foot area of the house, or the number of uh, other rooms, bathroom quality, living room quality, etc., or garage, number of cars it can store, etc. On the row side, it is going to be the features for each house. Let's say we have data of M house. For every house, there, going, there is going to be one prediction which is the price of the house, which is stored in the Y label. In linear regression, the predictions are given by this formula. So theta, these thetas are parameters and X are the features of the house. So if, we, if I write the vector of theta in this form, it will be of size n comma one. I hope this is very clear. Okay, so why we are discussing this? You see, the equation of prediction is given by this, and this represents only one prediction for one house, where we have the values or the features of the house given by axis, and thetas as the parameter. So, if we want to represent the predictions in the form of metrics, the predictions can for M houses, can be represented by nothing but x matrix multiplication 
theta. How? The size of the x is n comma n, size of theta is n comma 1, which gives us this equation for m times. So the overall size is going to be 1. So y hat will be again a matrix of these equations for different different houses for m houses okay now we know the prediction can be represented in the matrix form as x matrix multiplication theta now the cost function has the equation as this we can compute the value of y or we can compute y hat here as summation of the matrix of y this is capital y minus of this y hat capital y hat and square okay summation of this I hope you can understand that so what I did here is that I represented this summation in the matrix form so y is the matrix of the actual labels and y hat are the matrix of the predictions and we squared it and we are just summing the resultant matrix this is the cost okay now now the formula for the cost function is given by this so so the del cost by del theta will be if you know the calculus then you will know the del cost by del theta will come as 1 by m matrix multiplication of x transpose and y minus y hat now how did this came if you know calculus you will see that the derivative of this term will remove the square and it will cancel this too and then we will have a partial derivative of this term which will bring only x and as it is in the matrix multiplications the dimensions must match so the dimension of x transpose is n comma m and the dimension of uh, this is m comma 1 so the overall dimension will be n comma 1 which is the dimensions of the theta vector okay so del cos by del theta is given by this equation now we are going to completely implement the gradient descent algorithm at the beginning we have our data set x the labels y and we initialize theta vector as all zeros and this is as a size of n comma 1 we are initializing theta as all zeros and we have the data set x and their labels y so as we have initialized theta as zeros it will be somewhere near a very large cost value let's say I'm taking it here okay then we are going to loop this is a pseudo code for the gradient descent algorithm okay so we are going to loop let's say thousand times it can be any number of times as long as we reach to the minimum okay let's say we lose let's say we loop through thousand times we are going to first make uh, find out the predictions which is given by matrix multiplication of x and sorry this is theta we're going to do the matrix multiplication of x and theta then we are going to find out the cost function value which is given by this sorry there is a square here then we are going to find the derivative of del uh, derivative of cost with respect to theta i'm representing as del theta so del theta is the derivative of cost with respect to theta and we just saw it is it is equal to 1 by m matrix multiplication of x transpose and y minus of y hat and then we will update theta as theta minus of alpha which is a positive constant 
by it multiplied by del theta so del theta is going to be negative as the slope is negative so theta is going to increase so theta will go from here to somewhere here and we will move here similarly as the loop goes and goes we will eventually move closer and closer towards the minima and when it reaches here the slope will be positive so the theta will decrease and it will oscillate at a very close region near its minima and that's how we minimize the cost function so this was the complete implementation of the gradient descent algorithm now one thing to note is about alpha here here alpha is a positive constant and we call it learning rate it is called learning rate and there's a reason why it is called learning rate and the reason is the value of alpha determines how much bigger our step is going to be so if the value of alpha is large we're going to take larger steps but if the value of alpha is small we're going to take smaller smaller steps now if the value of alpha is extremely large then it is going to overshoot and what do I mean by that I mean from here if we were to convert and the alpha is very high instead of going this side it will go directly here up and from here it will go up so basically if the value of alpha is extremely large it is instead of getting converging it is going to diverge and it will go up to infinity so that was something to be noted about alpha okay that is so good you just saw the gradient descent algorithm and you also saw the implementation or the pseudocode of the gradient descent algorithm now if you want to sustain it you must implement the complete linear regression model by yourself otherwise it's just going to up the mind so I have another video for you which shows the complete implementation of the linear regression with Python and the way we are going to implement is by making a model on house price predictions you're going to love that now if you're interested in learning machine learning then hit the red subscribe button because I upload a machine learning video every week and if you are kind of a student like me or you like a fun learning then you might like my channel so hit the red subscribe button also if you like the video give this a thumbs up hit the bell icon as well and I see you in the next one